In this video, I will be talking about factor theorem. So factor theorem states that for any polynomial, p of x, if p of c is equal to zero, then x minus c is a factor of p of x. So in our last video, I went over an example where we divided x cubed minus x squared minus three x plus two by x minus two. And as a result, we got the answer x squared plus x minus one. Now the exact numbers are kind of irrelevant right now, but what I want to point out is that when you're able to divide it, that means that x minus two is a factor of x cubed minus x squared plus minus three x plus two. So therefore, if x minus two is similar to x minus c, then we should be able to plug in p of c, or in this case, p of two, and we will get zero as a return. So let's see if p of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus three x plus two, then p of two should equal to zero, which is equal to, let's see, two cubed minus two squared minus three times two plus two. This gives us eight minus four minus six plus two. What's that? That's, now these two, that's 10 minus 10, which is equal to zero. So once again, since x minus two is a factor of this equation over here, when we plug two or our value for c into our equation, then what we get in return is zero. And this is also, or using this theorem is a very quick way to find the different factors of polynomials. So for example, if we have p of x and it's equal to three x cubed minus, minus 11 x squared plus 20. And we wanna find out if x minus one is a factor or if x minus two. So which is the factor? Now a much longer way to solve this would be to do long division with both x minus one and x minus two and to see what the remainder is. A much quicker way to do this is to look back at the factor theorem. So if x minus c, or in this case, x minus one or x minus two is a factor, then p of c or p of one or two will be a factor of p of x. So let's try this out. For, so we're seeing, is x minus one a factor? In order to do this, we plug in one. So p of one, we get three times one cubed minus 11 times one squared plus 20, this gives us three minus 11 minus 20, which is most definitely not equal to zero. Now let's see with x minus two. Once again, we simply plug in p of two, and this gives us a value of three times two cubed minus 11 times two squared plus 20. And this gives us, let's see, three times eight is three times eight minus 11 times four plus 20. This is 24 plus 20 minus 44 that. And this is equal to zero. Therefore, x minus two, we can say that x minus two is a factor. That means that when, when we divide it, there will be absolutely no remainder. This theorem or the factor theorem could also be expanded in order to say that for any polynomial p of x, if p of b over a is equal to zero, then ax minus b is a factor of p of x. So let's take for example that we have the polynomial p of x is equal to two x cubed minus three x squared plus three x minus one and we have to see if 2x minus one is a factor, or rather we have to prove that 2x minus one is a factor. Well, we simply plug that into our theorem. So ax minus b or 2x minus one. So a is equal to two, b is equal to one. So if we plug this into our equation, we get p of b over a or one over two is equal to two times one over two cubed minus three times one over two squared plus three times one over two minus one. 
and this gives us 2 over 8 minus 3 over 4 plus 3 over 2 minus 1. Now if we multiply this whole entire thing by 8 just to get rid of the fractions. So times 8. This gives us 2 minus 3 over 4 times 8 plus 3 over 2 times 8 minus 1. This is 2 minus 6 plus 12 minus 1. I'm sorry, this is minus 8 in both places. Minus 8, and this gives us a value of 0. So therefore, we just proved that 2x minus 1 is a factor of p of x. So just as a quick recap, for any polynomial, p of x, if p of c is equal to 0, then x minus c is a factor of p of x. And another way to write this is for any polynomial p of x, if p of b over a is equal to 0, then ax minus b is a factor of p of x.